Okay, uh, we are going to do a video today on a product I've been waiting to get. I had seen them before quite a while ago. Uh, I know some guys that had used them. And I wanted to get some of the equipment from Hags. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Hags brackets and Hags clips. These are pretty ingenious little devices for uh, guys who trap in the water. It's not just for trapping in water, you can use the products on dry land trapping as well. Uh, very useful, very versatile. You, you modify the traps before you go into the field and then the bracket actually stays on the trap. You don't have to mess with it in the field. But they are very useful. There's a lot of different things you can do with them. Uh, let's see if I have one out here. This is a Hags bracket. So you can see it there. Now what it does is it, it has a multitude of different uses on your trap line. Uh, you can use it to mount the trap to a, a climbing pole for Martin or for Fisher or for Beaver. If you if you you know have a, a, a den entrance where they're coming out of the water or uh, like a climbing log where they're coming out of the water. Uh, you, you actually anchor this bracket to your trap you can use it as a stake swivel you flip it upside down you put the stake in the half inch hole and you can use it as a swivel if you're using a stake uh, it has a 3 8 inch hole too for mounting on 3 8 uh, smooth rod you can use rebar stakes in it you can screw it to timber you can screw it to the side of a tree and put the, the trap in it how it works is there's slots cut in it the one you can use it as a drowner as well uh, it's got a, a, a link hole in it so you can use it as a drowner. Uh, lots and lots of different uses. I've seen it where they've, they've wired them to drain tiles and had the trap out on the front of the drain tile for mink and muskrat to go into a, a drain tile. Uh, it's like super versatile, super useful. Now, the reason why I got it was that I wanted to use it for trapping muskrat primarily. So this is what you would do. I'll, I'll show you how to do it now in a minute. Uh, it links to your regular trap chain. You take the end swivel off it. You had a swivel, we'll say a regular drowner swivel like this. Most of the traps come with some sort of link swivel like that on the end of it with a, the little uh, the S hook on it. So what you do is you open that S hook and you take it, take it off and then you install the hags bracket on the trap. So what that enables you to do is with your smooth rod here. This is 3-8 smooth rod. There's a hole in the in the bracket. See, so there's two holes in it. One is for a stake swivel, and then one is for the 3-8 smooth rod. So what it will do, actually, let me set the trap here and I'll show you. Show you how it works. This is a Duke one and a half. Now this is what it's going to be, it's going to be a baited set. It's going to be a baited set. So now we have our trap set. And our bracket. So what you would do is, you would slide the Hags bracket onto the 3 8 pole, and then it will stop wherever you want it, at whatever depth you want it. See when I lift it, it slides and then when it locks when it has some tension on it. Now, the trap itself is anchored to the Hags bracket, as you can see. So you would drive your 3-8 pole into the base of the pond or base of the creek or wherever you want to set this. Uh, from what I've seen from, if you go to, you can see a lot of information on this if you go to J30 Outdoors, www.j30outdoors. That's the company who makes this bracket. They're American made and they're veteran owned, so good company to support they uh you drive the stake into the into the bank or into the base of the pond or the base of the creek or the base of the river and then the the, the peg end of the trap here actually fits in the bracket like so and then it holds it so now you have a platform so the idea behind this is that you you can place a bait or lure depending on what's legal in your state, uh, 
I seen uh, Mark Stack from Dakota Line Trapping. They, he can have like a little elbow piece of PV, PVC pipe on this where you would put musket rat lure in it. Uh, Hags also makes a little spring clip bracket. that it, it, It's an open spring so you can squeeze it on and off the line here. And they will mount a carrot or a piece of apple or a piece of parsnip or something to it that would attract the muskrat to it. Now the idea behind it is that you would have the, the bait about 10 to 12 inches above the trap but the trap will be laying just underneath the surface of the water. So what the muskrat's gonna do, he's gonna see that bait or he's gonna smell the lure that you have up here on the, on the pole and he's gonna come swimming in, come swimming in, circle around and then figure, well, I can't reach the bait on the pole so now I have to climb up on the trap. The trap is gonna be solid here because your bracket is holding it. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna get out of the water, climb up on your trap and then when he sets the trap off, Trap goes off, trap comes off, and he goes down into the water and he's done for. So the weight of the trap will hold him down and drown him out. So a very, very useful product, especially for guys who water trap. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of different uses for it. You can use it on a wire, a wire drowner. You can stake it, like I said, if you flip it upside down and put the stake down through the big hole. You can use it as a regular trap anchor and then it will swivel also. It has holes in it. You see the little holes in it there? These are all for trap slots, so I can wire it to something sideways and put the trap in that as well. So I can have it wired around a log or on a, on a, uh, a tree that's coming up out of the water or anything you want that muskrat or mink to climb up on, you can anchor this trap to. You can just, like I said, you can wire it. Uh, it's pretty versatile. There are, the, there's trap slots in it on both sides. Then, like I said, there's a screw, there's a hole on this side. The hole on this side I have the S hook in, or the J hook, should I say. This hole, you can put a, a regular wood screw into it and screw it to a tree. Or, like I said, you can wire it to a, a tile. I'm, I'm, I have a, a, a piece of drain tile in the shed. I might set it up and I'll show it to you later maybe. Uh, but that's how it's intended to work. It sits in a slot. There's two slots here that'll hold it. And if you have it set right, it will actually, you don't want to uh, force the trap into it. You want it, the trap just barely resting on it so that it won't be knocked off. But when it's set off, it comes out and pulls that muskrat or mink down to the bottom. Now you really want your traps set. You want it set pretty level. See, now you can set it. That's not quite level, but it, the muskrat's not going to bother. He he climbs on uneven things all the time. He's not too worried about it. But ideally, you don't want it shoved real, real far in the bracket. You just want it enough so when it goes off, it comes right off like that, and then he's done for it. The weight of that trap is going to pull him down, and he ain't coming back up. And uh, then your rat's going to be waiting there for you. So it's, it's a really nice product. Now they make another product, which is a spring clip. Pretty simple, right? But what it does is, on your conibear traps, so they make two different sizes. They make one size for 110 up to 160, and then they make a magnum size for 160 up to 330. So there are two different sizes. You want to check and see which one you're, you're going to need. But... What it does is it mounts in the spring on your conibear trap. So what you have to do is spread the spring apart with a screwdriver, you spread the spring apart and then feed the, the little clip through it. So you want it where the, the little lip here is outside the spring. See how I have it set there? You make sure, always make sure that it comes through the spring so it can't come off. So now what you're gonna do with this is this is on a 110 Magnum that I just recently got from my trapper giveaway. So I'll set it and I'll show you what it can do. In case people didn't realize, there's a, <laughs> these conibears here, you see the way they have three notches? There's a reason for that. When you put it all the way to the back notch like that. That's all the way back. Oh, I've got to do this without trapping my fingers in this. Otherwise, you're going to get a good laugh. But 
we have it set all the way to the rear, the rearmost notch. That's going to give you the most spring pressure, but it's also going to give you the highest trigger tension. So if you go all the way to the front of it, like that, that gives you the lightest trigger possible. So for a smaller animal like a weasel or a mink that, that might be a little leery, that takes very little effort to push that trigger now out of its way uh, because it's on its lightest setting. Of course, the middle one will be a medium setting, the very back one will be a heavy setting, and then the front one is its lightest setting. So yeah, that's why there's three different notches on that trigger, just in case you didn't know. That makes that trigger now very, very light, and it makes those, those uh, trigger fingers there really easy to push. So, back to setting the trap. Now that I have it set, I'll put it back on the heaviest one so I don't bump it. So again, with the 3 8 smooth rod, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your spring clip, like so, and mount it over the 3 8 rod, and then it will actually support your trap on the rod. So now I can set this at any depth. This is useful because the other, you can see this is probably four and a half foot long. So I can set this in pretty deep water if I want. And again, all I have to do is lift it to move it. I can move it anywhere up or down the pole I want. And then once I put it in, it'll be whatever depth I want. The, the nice thing about this is, I mean, even with this, you can twist the trap. If I can do it without trapping my fingers in it. So you want it in a little closer, you can, you can move it, you know, and kind of put it wherever you want it. You can also put double spring traps on it. I think I have one rigged up. I'll have to look and see. But now this gives me an opportunity to set two traps in one spot also. You can actually bait the the uh, the prongs of these too, like you would for under ice beaver, something like that, where they would wrap stick bundles on the 330. So when he goes to grab the sticks, the trap comes down on them. You can do the same thing with a muskrat. You can put a piece of carrot on there or a piece of parsnip on there, something that's bright that he can see underwater. And you can have it mid-depth, not necessarily on the bottom. You can have this also just underneath, say if this was the water surface, you could have it just under the water surface so he can see that carrot while he's swimming around. And once he goes in to get the carrot, he's done. But what I like about it is I can now set this. So I can have this all the way at the bottom of the pole. And I, I can set that in a run like a bank den. And then at the top of my pole, I can have my other trap set with a surface with a baited set. So now I have two. I have my, my float top of the water set up for when he's swimming around cruising. And then I have a bank then set up under the water on the same pole. It's like, how can you go wrong with that? <laughs> that's, that's a really good setup. That's a really good setup. So whether he's swimming on top of the water or going back into the den, now I have two opportunities at him. I could also have that set for a muskrat or in a muskrat hole, and then I could have this set and have bait on it for or lure on it for a mink. So I have two opportunities to catch different animals. But it's pretty nice, pretty nice setup. Uh, let me I think I have that double spring trap over there too. Let me see if I can uh, if I can get that and put it on the pole here. Okay, here we have our 155. I'm gonna put a clip in the opposite end here. So what you want is a real big wide blade screwdriver. You stick it in the jaw to spring. Feed it through the first opening there. So you have it through one notch. And what you want to do, this one, this to do this end is a little trickier. It's easier to do it if you have a, a vise. Put it in the vise. So you want to put the screwdriver in. Spread the spring open as far as you can. Like I said, it's a little easier if you put it in a vise and do it. Almost. There it goes. So now I have it through the through the spring eyelet. If I have it the right way around, I think I do. Uh, 
Okay, I have my my 155 here with the two springs. Now the, this principle would work too with a, a you know a 220 or 330 something big in the water. Actually, I should be able to feed it this way. Let's put my anchor on. Let's slide it onto the pole. And my second spring. Slide that onto the pole. Then all I have to do is, when I want to adjust it, I can just close the jaws together. And that'll make it slide up and down the pole real easy. Then when I get to where I want to set it, just let the pull the spring apart a little bit and it will lock on there. And now I can set a really big trap under the water. And then the 3 8 rod stabilizes it too. So I could, I could effectively put it on the bottom too if I wanted to put that in a run. Or if I have a bank then that's up off of the bottom. It's not on the bottom, but it's up off the bottom. Uh, or, a or a run where they're in deeper water and then they're coming out off of deeper water onto the bank. I could have that right on that exit way. Uh, that I mean, it, it's so simple when you think about it, but it secures that trap perfectly steady with the double springs on it. And like I said, it'll work exactly the same with a with a big 330 or a 220. So if you were trapping beaver or otter, it'll do the same thing. You can you don't have to use fiberglass poles either. You can use steel, 3 8 inch steel poles. So for something that's really big like a beaver or an otter. Uh, you, you don't have to use a fiberglass pole, you could use a steel pole. But like I, I said, that anchors that trap perfectly fine. You could also use it this way if you were gonna put it across a, a run. You know, you could put the pole across a bank in a ditch or something like that, you know, and have the beaver or the otter come through this way. Uh, like in a, a crossing maybe, or a dam crossing, or a channel from one pond to another. It would it would do the same thing as well, and use the trap to stable or the pole to stabilize the trap under a run that way. Uh, like I said, it's it's pretty versatile. There's a lot of uses. There's a lot of ways you can use it. Like I said, you just comp compress it together, and then it slides perfectly easy up and down the pole. Freaking awesome! It's just great, great product. Again, you could use this as a baited set under underwater, under ice, uh, for muskrat, beaver, anything like that same thing you might be able to also bait it with fish you know use a sardine or something on it, or a smelt or a sprat something like that on it for mink it might would work the same way as well but super easy super quick like i said the, the you'll see now when i slide it off here the uh the clips stay on the trap you don't have to mess with it when you're out on the line they stay in the springs once you have it looped, like I said, when it's properly looped around the spring like that, it's going to stay in there. It won't come off. Of course, you can use a two for a chain anchor. Now, this trap already has a chain anchor, of course, but you can use a two for a chain anchor if you wanted. But, uh, yeah, super versatile, even for the double spring traps. Like I said, you can still use those two. Uh, I have a bunch of traps here. Actually, I'm going to show you here. Let me get my 110 off of here. Uh, let's see, I have a new Duke one and a half here. You can see it's untreated. We got a whole bunch of two good stuff here. So this is an this is a J hooker S hook tool. It's actually a multi tool. It's also a wire cutter for cutting cable there. You can see the little notch in the bottom of it. So this is specially made to open these hooks. So what I'm gonna do is open it, push the blade into it there. And then squeeze it really tight and what it does is it spreads open the j-hook just like that so now i can take my trap off of it now what i'll do is i'll reuse the j-hook take it out of the drowner clip a lot of times i upgrade these uh i can get minnesota brand crush proof drowners which are much heavier like this they're th much thicker steel I have a whole bag of them there. All sorts of trapping parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our hags bracket. We're going to get our front hole there. J clip goes through the hole. Comes out the other side. And then what we're going to do is link it back into the chain. 
and I'm going to use the same tool again. This time I'm going to open it, I'm going to put it on the outside of the J-hook. Get it over the, the, over the hook, like so, and then squeeze tight until it's touching. And there we go. It's linked down, it's touching. Now if you really want to make that secure, you can spot weld it and it will never come apart. But there's no animal that this that this trap is gonna get into that will be able to pull out a port anyway. This is the biggest animal I would probably you'll probably get in a setup like this would be a coon. Uh it's intended for mink and muskrat on that pole. And now you see it's part of my chain. This is again is the is a it's linked to the trap now permanently, so you're not gonna lose it, you're not gonna drop it. And like I said, there's a multitude of ways you can use it. Uh, I, I want to dig up that drain tile and show you how you can wire it out, wire it up to a drain tile, because that's super useful too for water trapping. You can make tube traps and pipe traps for uh, for mink, especially mink. They like cruising in those little tunnels. Uh, let me go get that and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here we have a piece of drain tile. So it'll mimic any sort of drain in a creek. Uh, you can drill a hole in this and stake it right into the bank of the creek you can put bait inside it uh this tool is going to mimic any sort of drain you can actually cut it off dig a hole in the bank and put it into the bank if you want just have the end sticking out it's it's like a pre-made cubby now for mink ideally i'd want it smaller one than this this is quite large uh but I, the principle is going to be the same i'm going to show you how this would mount we got one of these brackets here So here's your bracket. Of course you have it, it's gonna be anchored to your trap. So what you're gonna use is you're gonna use the the, uh, the holes here and the base of it and you're gonna wire it around the culvert pipe or the drain tile here. You got a piece of, got a piece of wire here that's big enough to go around it. If you're going to make sets like this for 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 mink that's long enough if you're going to make sets like this for mink and you're going to make your own tile from straight from j30 what i'd seen they do is they cut the bottom section of the drain tile off now obviously you don't want to cut a farmer's drain tile in his in his drainage ditch don't do that <laughs> You'll never trap there again. Uh, but if you're making these and you're bringing them into the field with you, uh, especially for mink, if you cut the end of it out at an angle and then have the trap set in, you know, further down into the pipe. So he has to come out. He can't get past either side of it. He has to come out right over the trap. If you are going to wire a tile that's flat like this, you might want to have some uh, guide sticks on either side of it so the mink can't jump out the side. You know, you, you'll be able to jump out the side instead of coming over your pan. But what we're going to do here is we're going to wire this to the bottom of that tile. So what we'll do is pass the wire through the hole. Pass the wire through the other hole. So now you see, how, you see how I have the wire gone through the bracket. So what we'll do is we'll feed it through some more. Get it to the top, it'd be easier for me to tie it down. You wanna get it tight in there and then lock it either side. Then we're gonna go have it right at the end of the tile. And we're gonna wrap the wire right around the tile here. It's corrugated, so it can't pull off. Get your pliers. Then as you 
twist it, what it's going to do is it's going to tighten down. So now you can see my bracket is wired to the bottom of the tile. So now you figure this is where your water level is going to be. And then... Of course, imagine my trap is set now. Put it in a little slot there. Now I can have my trap right at the end of the culvert pipe. So hopefully your mink or your muskrat is gonna, let me set this real quick. Your mink or your muskrat is gonna come through that pipe, go in and get his bait, and then he's gonna come back. And this is gonna be waiting for him when he comes out the end of it. So you can see how it's mount there, mounted there. You can see just underneath it. So then that would sit right in the slot. If I can get it in with my left hand. I almost have it right there. So you see it had to Traps it's right at the end of the pipe. Just perfect. So when he comes out of the pipe, steps on the trap, boom, got him. So there's lots of different ways you can use it. That that's super useful. Super useful. Lots of different ways you can mount it. This is only one example of it. You know, it's a, it's like I said, it's very versatile. The the possibilities for to anchor the traps are unlimited. Uh, I've seen where guys, uh, muskrats and mink too, will do the same thing. They will uh, use objects in the water, like big rocks or something like that, that are out of the water. They'll uh, use them as toilets to mark their territory and mark scent. And uh, you can actually wire this to a rock on a low spot of the rock where the animal's going to come up out of it and put that trap right on a rock. And it will mount right to the rock and you'll be able to get them. Uh, like I said, the just there's no imagine you know no limit to the, what you what you can do with it to get it to to get it to function. It's uh, super versatile. I was very impressed with it. Lots of different ways you can use it. Lots of different ways you can use it. They're not horribly expensive. Like I said, they're American made. They're good quality. Uh, you can treat them, dye them, wax them, just the same as you would your trap. Or paint them if you want to paint them, you can do that too. But like I said, I'm really looking forward to using them a lot more on the on the trap line next year, especially for muskrat and mink. Uh, I have a couple of older one and a halfs I'm going to mount them to. I have some new, uh, new number ones I'm going to mount them to. And I have some new one and a halfs like this guy that I have them mounted to. So. Use those predominantly, of course, for my water line. Uh, but yeah, really good products. There they are, Hag's bracket, and then this one is the Hag spring clip. And I believe this website is on the back here. It will be www.j30.com. It gives you some information on the back of the packet here and how to set them. Uh, a lot of the trapping companies carry that product. Uh, you can get it from the snare shop, you can get it from Hooser Trapper Outdoors, you can get it from F and T. Uh, you can find them on eBay. Lots of different places they'll have them. Uh, like I said, they're pretty cheap. I got that packet for less than thirty dollars for a dozen clips, and that's all I'm going to use. I won't put out, you know, five hundred sets with those on it, but. Uh, I trap limited areas for water, so a dozen traps is more than enough for me, especially if I'm using them in conjunction with conner bears as well. But the, the fiberglass rod was pretty cheap to get too. This is actually for fencing, for electric fencing. Uh, I think I got this at Tractor Supply. It was a couple of dollars a pole, wasn't really expensive, so it's a versatile setup. Uh, of course, I'm still learning with it. What I, from what I've seen, uh, 
good area to set up those bait sets, especially like here where I have a lot of predatory birds. And I, if you watch my muskrats videos from just last season, uh, you'll see that an eagle came down and a bald eagle came down and ate one of my muskrats that was on the bank. Uh, he, he pulled it right out of the water. It was close to the edge of the bank and he hauled that rat up out of the water. And I was lucky that the only thing that held him was my trapping stake. That, that's what held it. Otherwise he'd have taken it and the trap and everything. Uh, he pulled it right out in the bank and he ate the whole thing clean. All that was left was the skin. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I haven't never had that happen before. But there's a lot of uh, like large birds of prey. We have golden eagle, we have bald eagle that I see pretty regularly. Not all the time, but pretty regularly. I have big red tail hawks, I have big goss hawks. Uh, so any of those birds of prey will prey on muskrat. Owls too. So muskrats are not keen in daylight, you know, swimming out on the open water. They're, they're pretty shady so that's how they stay alive uh the mink obviously hunt muskrat i'm sure if a big coon got hold of a muskrat he could probably eat a muskrat as well uh but they're they're not apt to travel in areas that are not they don't have some sort of bank cover they will move during the day they'll come out during the day they'll but they'll t tend to stay around weed beds or overhanging bank or where there's a tree on the bank that gives them some protection from overhead that's a good place to set those you know surface water sets like that or, or in bull rushes and things like that where they have some cover uh around feed beds uh, if they're coming out on the bull rushes or they have huts where they have you know uh little feed mats and stuff like that those are all good places to set that predominantly when i trap muskrat in shallow water i'll use the uh, trail sets where i have uh, conner bears right over the de uh, like den entrances or trails where they're coming into den entrances uh, I don't have too many areas where I have big marsh here where you have muskrat huts and, you know, they're coming in and out of feed beds and build, you know, big rush banks and stuff like that. Uh, the, some of the ponds I trap have a lot of vegetation in them. And of course, that's why the muskrats are there. But uh, try to put them in areas where they have a little bit of cover and they'll feel a little bit safer coming out. Of course, at nighttime, they'll hit them too. I've, uh, I trap a, a lot of rats after dark. Uh, I can check sets during the day and they'll be empty and then follow morning they'll be full because they'll be moving at night time more so than moving during the day. But I thought I'd, you know, show you the little bit of information on the Hags Bracket and uh, it's a pretty good product. You know, like I said, I only, I only showed you the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with it. Uh, it's a, It's a pretty good, pretty good system. It's a pretty good system. I'm really looking forward to setting them out this year. So we'll see you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed the video.